welcome to this week's episode of Never Thought I'd Say This. I am one of your hosts, Jody Sweeten, along with the woman who helps me wrangle the squirrels when, uh, you know, she's not doing some squirrel wrangling of her own, um, Celia Behar. Hi, Celia. Hi. Hi. This, Hi. The fact that I'm in charge of wrangling anything in, the, in these current days oh. is not good. Well, Let's just be clear. Somebody needs some supervision here. <clears throat> yeah. Both of us. That's why Sabrina's here, because well, that's fuck. terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Sabrina. That's horrifying. There really is no one. Sabrina is the most responsible, terrifying person I know. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> and anyone out there who knows Sabrina is like, oh my God, that's totally actually right. Like she's the most responsible, the most terrifying and responsible person that I know. Well, she's the conductor on the Hot Mess Express today. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh boy. I, I mean, this, this shit is no joke right now. No like, joke. At all. I've been a disaster. I'm not even going to say why, but I, I'm going to tell. Can I tell a story? Can I tell the story about Saturday? Because really, it took what was a while. The story? <laughs> what happened? It really what took did a I while. Do? No, when you I nearly did passed it. out. Yes, that. Oh Jesus, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. All right. So Jody and I were at uh, John and Caitlin Stamos's house for a um, a little mom political. Yes. Action. Uh, check out. At Vote Mama, by yep, the way, and yep. also check out their app. They're going to be launching their app pretty soon. They're looking for people to kind of do some beta testing on it. <laughs> so fancy. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they're looking for people. So check out at Vote Mama. Um, and we're actually thinking of having um, her on the show. And yeah. I cannot remember her name right now because L I'm a. Lu uh, Lu Luba? Luba? Yeah. Luba, Luba? Luba? Something. Luba. Yes. I'm so terrible Sorry, and awful. Me but too. yes, uh, I have followed her and I'm going to be in contact with her because I think she'd be great yeah, for the show. Yeah. She followed me as well on the show. And yeah, yes. I'm and there were some other great. Uh, uh, political people on there that uh, yeah it was it was to. awesome and and Caitlin did such a great job and and, and also bunt cakes and oh my god and she saved so my life with a fucking bunt cake many bunt cakes um so anyway I <laughs> I've been going through some some shit and I am not when I have anxiety I can't eat as oh well. I know I yeah I I I know I, I can't eat the, the thought of chewing is oh terrifying. my god I just can't do it so I haven't really been eating. And Jody came and picked me up and, when, and I like rallied. I'm like, you know, so much self-talk be between tears of like, you would do this. And Jody comes and gets me and we go to this thing and I'm like, I got I got this. I'm all right. I'm OK. But I also hadn't been near people like at all. Right. And it was yeah. a lot of was a lot people. of people. It's a lot of people. And Very I'm peopling. like, oh, my God. And it was <clears throat> really hot. Like it didn't. Yeah, we were. It was, it was just. It was sun. a lovely day. Yeah. If you were like poolside and could kind, of, you know. Right. But otherwise, we were like standing, and it was. It got a little hot. We were also like the one of the maybe seven people that were standing in the direct sunlight, sunlight. because yep. I turned around and looked, and everyone else had kind of crept back into shady spots, and yep. I was like, oh, oh, so it's us. We're yeah, the yeah. Idiots. Okay, yeah. Cool. Like we're <clears> dumb, <throat> and so I'm like dehydrated. I'm sure I haven't eaten. And I'm and I'm like overwhelmed, I'm anxiety overwhelmed, ridden. anxiety ridden. Right. And then we're talking about all the like the political state of the world and especially for right, women, right. which right. was also like not helping. And I've never it passed was just wow, it was I a lot. Consider yeah. the perfect storm that that was. I'm like, was sorry that I brought so, you to that. It was not your fault. No, it I was mean, good. It was good for you. It but was I, good to get out. But like, holy crap! And yeah. so then I'm like, it was the perfect storm. It really was. And I. I've never passed out in my life. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm seeing spots. I'm not totally sure that I'm going to make it. Your lips were blue. Yeah, dude. It like was, you were a shade. I was like, oh my God. And yeah. then like you went to go sit down and I like got pulled talking to somebody. Yeah. And I'm like looking over their shoulder like, is my friend dying? Is, I No, okay? I walked by you. I'm like, I have to go inside. I'm I, not feeling well. And right as I did that, like the speeches were over because you were like, okay, I'm coming. And then I like watched as like 18 people like, you know, right. came and I was up like, to ah, you. And, and, but I saw you I'm sit so down and then it. I was like, eat a, eat a bun cake. Well, but there was nothing there at the time. So I right, sit down, there wasn't, I have yeah. water. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God. It, this isn't helping. I'm super nauseous. Please don't let me throw up. But I'm like in the middle <laughs> oh, of this event. Man, don't so I be, like no. rally myself and I'm like, just got to get to the bathroom. Thank God I know what like where the bathroom is. Right. And I just go into the bathroom and like no joke, I close the door. I don't turn on the lights and I just like 
go, I like hit the ground. Like I don't pass out, but I'm like, oh, nope, really no, can't stand go, anymore. Great. Get very low. And I just we hurt sit on the like tile and it's cool. Oh, that's the best. And I'm like, oh, oh thank God. And like the breeze is, or the, like the AC is like blowing on me and everything. And I'm just like, you have to get your shit together. You cannot pass out in the Stanford's bathroom. <laughs> Fucking deal with your life. Oh. This is this is not it. <laughs> deal with your life. Like fucking this get up. And so finally, I'm like, <laughs> I calm down. And it was. It was a complete right. panic attack. Like it was, it was panic yeah. beyond measure. And I, I'm like, all right, you're fine. Everything's you fine. So brave. This my is friend. my. I was like, you're good. You got this. No one, no one's gonna know. It's not a big deal. Like go out. You'll find Jody. You'll be all right. And I open the door, and there's Patton Oswald standing. There. <laughs> I'm like, Latin. right. You know what I mean? And I'm just kind of like, motherfucker, whose life is this? Like this, I used to live in like fucking upstate New York and like deal with at-risk kids. And now I'm like passed out on the Stamos' bathroom only to walk out to Pat and Oswald. You know, like well, I was like, hey, you're welcome, my friend. what's up? <laughs> you know, and of course he like right away, he was, he was so lovely and nice. And I like talked to him for a few minutes because we know people in common. And then I realized as I walked away, as I'm still seeing spots, that I never said who I was or anything. So like, so whatever, bye. Sit down. Caitlin saw me and was like, "Are you okay? What's going on?" And I, I was like, "I am having like a sunstroke like a moment, something." Yeah, and yeah. and she knows what's going on in my life anyway. Yeah, yeah. So she was like, "Hold on." She gets me an ice pack and a glass of water. She's like, "Put this on the back of your neck. You're okay. You're she's okay." So, I love Caitlin. She's such a she's doll. such a sweetheart. And then she fed me uh, bun cakes. Oh my god, and they were so good. We ate. I made we ate like we did. We both did. I was like, I'm gonna always have one. And I was like, you know what? No, no, that. There, there's two. And Caitlin was like, there's so many. Please eat them. And I was like, well, I don't want to be rude. So then we I split did. one. Oh, and then I was, yeah, we split one. It was it was one of those. Um, I was, was saved. Ah, oh, that's such a good title. Saved I was saved. By the I was saved by the bunt cake. Oh, and I kept walking around to you. I was like, "Is it a bunt? Is a bunt? What? Bunt, it's bunt, a bunt, Because I can't not from you know my big frag regretting. But right. yeah, and then we took one to go. Like then we were both were like, "Let's and we take one to go." Yeah, cake. and then and yeah. then the best part of it was I was starving. Right, I hadn't eaten all day. <laughs> so what do I do? But go to your house yeah. and then proceed. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm hungry." And then I was like, "But I don't really want salty. Like I want sweet because of course I do." And um, <laughs> and so I open up and you had, God damn it, you had a tin, those, the Royal Danish from your cookies mom. from my mom, yep. from your mom, the blue ones, the it's fucking fault, drugstore, Janice. the drugstore uh, cookies, sugar cookies. Oh, not even sugar. No, they're no, 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 yeah, they are, they're no, right? they are Danish cookies. Oh, and they butter, are right, very right, right. specific God, Royal so Danish good. cookies. Mm -hmm. They're butter cookies. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. And I ate all of them. <laughs> I ate she all did. the rest that was in there. And I was like, I, oh. And then, that, and then I like walked over, sat on the couch and I walked back by and I was like, oh shit, I did that. Like I just. I oh my God, like, oh I'm my glad God. you did. I also scared oh. the shit out of her with my uh, soda stream. She was oh, like, God. she's eating you did cookies. It right behind me. I didn't. <laughs> And then it like makes that like farting noise. And she was like, ah, I, like, <laughs> I had no idea I, that she was about to do whatever she was about to do behind yeah. me. And I'm just sitting there talking and this like shrieking, awful, horrific noise of a soda stream starts behind me. And I just panicked. It was I thought, so I thought funny. she got her hand stuck in a blender or something. I didn't know what the fuck happened. It was so funny. Oh, well, uh, it was, well that was. Uh, it was an eventful day. It was an eventful day. No. And you know what we did? We did adult tasks. We did adult tasks. And then we sat on my couch and you let me cry to you for about two hours, which I yeah. was very helpful because yeah. that's what best friends were for. And then you left and I cried more. It was great. It was oh, a good time. You loved, then you cried because I left. I did. Um, and then my kids came home. That was great. Oh. Oh wait, we have to talk about. Uh, we have to talk about our shirts. Yeah. We. Uh, uh, someone sent me this store, and it's what is it? Love Alex. Uh, wow, we're great. I'll pull it up. We'll pull it up. Uh, but well, Jennifer, it was Jennifer Killjoy that sent yes. them to us. Yes, right. Or the store to us. She the, like Jennifer Killjoy yeah. sent the, the store. Love. But F bomb kind of mom. Uh, F, sorry, sorry F-bomb F -bomb kind, kind of, mom. of mom. I thought Sabrina was just making inappropriate. Um, <laughs> that really was something. She was like telling me to talk closer into the microphone. Yep. <laughs> but I yep. And if you could make that, you know, what, know you know what, what it is. Doing it, you know what like, it is. You know. I was like, why is she yeah. talking? Pretend she was holding a mic and trying to get Jody to put the mic to her. That was the gesture she, she was, was making. <laughs> That 
That, that that is actually the sign for it. And, so, and no matter what you're holding, that still is what, what you're right. holding. That's like you're still holding and you're bringing it closer yeah, to yeah, your mouth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Oh boy. I think this day is gonna be great. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, and we have we have another show in 30 minutes sure. with a guest, Fuck. so we have to get through whatever uh, this is gonna be. Shop quickly. shop love Alex. Yes, shop love Alex. Uh, F bomb kind of mom. Oh, go speak in the microphone. Right. Uh, and these are the shirts that we got. So anyway, check out uh, at shop love. What is it? At shop, shop love, uh, love. Shop love Alex. Love right? X, X Alex. Alex. Yeah. Yes. Shop Love X Alex. And we follow uh, we follow her. Yeah. She's really awesome. Cute stuff, fun. Mama made, uh, you know, homemade uh, small business type of stuff. So, yeah. And um, earrings and stuff, too. She's awesome. Oh, yeah. I got the cute little butterflies. Yeah. <laughs> it was perfect for Mother's Day. I actually gave my mom the little butterfly studs. Oh, I'm she glad. She loved them. Yeah. I'm glad. Uh, um, so we should take a break. And then I also want to hear how your Mother's Day was. Oh, it was good. We'll um we'll chat quickly about uh um Mother's Day and uh and then we'll go to break. Let's do Mother's okay, Day first. That's fine. Mother's sure. Day Mother's Book Day it. was nice. I went down to uh my parents' house with the girls, uh, and we were gonna go out to one of our favorite restaurants down there called the the original fish company, which has been there forever and we've gone there my entire life. Mm -hmm. Um and really great seafood. But the wait was like almost two hours and oh, we were God. just like, yeah, that's not happening. So uh, we ordered takeout instead, which was still about 45 minutes, but that was fine. I could take my mom and the kids home and then I just went back and picked it up. So we had a lovely uh, lunch together, coconut shrimp and ahi tuna bowls and stuffed scallops and Yum. bread and chowder and all kinds of things. Uh, and then I took the girls shopping, which was a fruitless endeavor. Zoe needs a You took of the kids shopping on your on Mother's Day. Look, I did get some things for myself. I got some things right. from Lush, but that Zoe needs sum up being a fucking mom. Exactly. I don't even know what does exactly. But Zoe needed dresses for graduation coming sure. up, so we had to do that, and we found nothing. So that was awesome. <laughs> um, but like everything is cut for fucking euphoria high. I, it's <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not kidding. Ever, I was like. <laughs> I was like, what are these dresses? That Everything. Was that was brilliant. <laughs> Everything sorry. is cut for Euphoria High. Like one yeah. fucking nipple cover yeah, and then yeah. over here. And I'm like, who? Also, just in a general sense, who is wearing these? Nicki Minaj. <laughs> okay, but not that. Like, right. Like, and I she was should like, be. if you need a dress for a wedding. I, what are you wearing? I, I'm wearing this. And I know, like, I know you can't necessarily wear all this shit to prom or something. Like, what are, who is wearing all of these things that everything is cut out of? I don't want to pay for things I'm not getting. I want a dress. Yeah. Give me a dress. And I know I sound old right now, but God damn it. I um, took I took Harper to Urban Outfitters. Uh, yeah, Urban and Outfitters, it's like, no Anthropology. It's like no, this Urban ties Outfitters. here, and then this is open here, and then and look, that's cute, and it's fine. But when my like eighth, ninth grade daughter is trying to find summer dresses, and everything is just that, yeah, that like it's really impossible. take her to Urban Outfitters. Harper got a really cute dress. There's very cute, nice, <sighs> pretty, okay. not well, she, I don't not pieces want. missing from okay. uh, from Urban Outfitters. I okay. will say that, but. I also, I, it's so funny because I like make fun of you for taking them shopping. But then I also had said to Harper, like, because I promised that we would get things for her room because she, she just like never picked things out since we right. moved. And so I kept being like, send me a wish list, send me a wish list. And finally, you know, yesterday she's like, I have that wish list now. And I was like, yeah, like of course you do. great. Right. You know, and so, you know, a couple hundred dollars later, <laughs> I was like, fine. I just pulled the trigger, bought everything for her that she yeah. wanted on. Not everything, but you know, the things that right, we right, decided right. on so that she could have like a room. Yeah, yes. I, I, the girls and then I bought through, lunch for us. The too. girls are going through redos right yeah. now. So, well, Mascal's treating me to a, a massage later. Oh, that's great. That's um, fantastic. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, so that'll be nice. Well, Harper nice. made me a meal. She made yes, brunch. Yes, you said that. That's so... I, she was like awesome. a rock star. She... Listen, I know we've talked about this before, and this will actually kind of tie into things that we, you know, what our kids can and can't do at different ages, um, but we're going to talk about it on the show. But, uh, you know, my kids, I can't, I have not been able to hide what's been going on, you know, in my, in my life from my kids, not, not to mention it also affected them. And so they have been 
so great because yeah. I can't tell you how much I, I mean I'm just crying and I'll look at them I'm like I'm really sorry and they're like mom if you weren't sad if you're not crying like that'd be weird like right. like they've been great and so Harper uh had told me then you know the night before she said um you know you're gonna hear things in the morning and the ring's gonna go off and I <laughs> do not want you to get out of bed like don't worry about it don't worry about it I got this and I said all right and I did and so she had walked to the store and with her own money and bought Everything that she wants to make for brunch, she made buttermilk pancakes, blueberry buttermilk pancakes from scratch and bacon. Aww. And she was like, I couldn't buy champagne because, you know, I can't buy alcohol. Right. <laughs> I said, thank God. And she's like, but you had the vodka in the freezer. And so I made you like, you know, uh, like a faux mimosa. She like, you know, it was very cute. And like all this fresh fruit she cut up and she and she brought me roses and like That's decorated so the whole table yeah and lulu helped the whole time and, Aww, and like they never job, fought good and by job. the way lulu comes in she's like um mom can you come in the kitchen there's something in there i don't know what it is and it's like scaring me i go lulu you do understand that my room is like on the opposite wall of the kitchen and I can hear you and I can smell the food. So you but can kind of so drop cute. that act. She, oh, <laughs> no, so, I would have rolled with it and like, no, really? She, What's she, happening? Oh, come on. She was I, like, OK, just okay, come, then. you know, and then we that's, ordered sushi later. And we that's watched, adorable. Uh, I love it. Spider -Man. Yeah, it was love good. It. Uh, so we are going to be chatting today about a new Netflix show that's getting a lot of buzz because it stars small children, very small children, as you guys probably know. Uh, small children and the ups and downs of raising them into productive, well-adjusted adults is a topic that we talk uh -huh. a lot about uh -huh. on this show uh -huh. because uh -huh. we're actually attempting to do that and uh, it's way fucking harder than it looks. I mean, I'm not so sure how well-adjusted I am at the moment, <laughs> but okay, well, okay. You know, sure. well-adjusted to what? I mean, that's the question, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I make to normal sure. situations, probably not, okay. but to strange things, absolutely, yeah. I'm very well-adjusted <laughs> to that. Yeah. I am. Yeah, there. yes. Yes. Weird shit. We are, think. yes. I'm like, this feels normal. Right. Yeah. So that's Th yeah. things shitting the bed all right, at right. once. Like, yes, I absolutely. am well adjusted. I am to well this. adjusted to that. Yeah. So that's see, true. you are fucking well adjusted. That, yeah. Don't let mm -hmm. anyone tell you. You're right. Great. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, trying to raise our kids into normal humans and uh, whatever that means. Whatever that means. You know, we're in a different place now, too, because our kids, we've been through the little stage. We've, yep. been, you know, like, it's so nice now that, you know, they can come in here and they'll, like, turn the oven on and make a little right. frozen pizza right. or, like, make me brunch. Feel, for, like, figure out how right. to order something for themselves mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, they can, they're, they're older now and they can do that. But the new, the Netflix show, uh, which has come out of Japan called Old Enough, uh, is working to teach very small children age yeah. two to four, to go out and do adult tasks. Yeah. Now, here's the I thing. it was two to five, but. I mean, it might be two to five, but. but Not that it matters. It is so dramatic. Oh, my goodness. But also, I know, like, and I know it, there has been a lot of controversy around it. So, before anyone loses their minds or, you know, calls whatever the Japanese version of CPS is. Right. Uh, just know that the show has been airing in Japan since 1991. So the shows that you're seeing on Netflix now, those people all have grown up into human beings. Right, they're adults. With all of their, right, with limbs uh -huh. and things attached. Nothing uh -huh. tragic happened. They made it at least nothing from this show. Right. Um, that we know of. It, you're watching toddlers you know, cross the street all by themselves and do things. Now, not just do, they're like going on full-blown errands. Yeah, but like, you know, that is like, that's actually a very typical Japanese thing. I know. But so I think like also it's a, it's like a, it's a cultural thing, which is really interesting, but it's highlighting sort of these pivotal moments for parents and children as it teaches the impact of a seemingly trivial task on a kid's life. And like also... It's just fascinating. Like, for me, I'm like, what do they do? Like, I always want to know, you know, if little kids left to their own devices. Like, right, what would watching they do? the preschool yard, that shit was fascinating. Because <laughs> they're little, undeveloped brained cave people, basically, with very minimal social skills who will bite each other if things don't go their way. It's and they're just trying to like figure out and operate in the world. And I'm like, how are they going to do this? Like, what frame of reference do they have? They just they're making shit up. And like, it, it's crazy. To it, me. it is crazy. And you kind of forget like what kids are 
Or I guess you're like, maybe we didn't know, you know, you don't really know what you're, what kids are like totally capable of in a weird way, you know? Right. And it's like to see, to see that happen. And like more so, I guess, like when we do know what they're capable of, it's because they've like gotten away with something or gotten into something and you're like, oh my God, I had no idea. Like they were able to do that. Like it's also that thing. Like when you see your kid, you know, using scissors and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like there's some that you you know that they have you know they have to use, learn how to fucking use scissors. If they don't learn how to use scissors, they're going to be in trouble a lot as, yeah. as an adult. That's going to be the least. Of their and then problems. they'll hoard scissors and you'll never <laughs> right, find them in your fucking house thing, again. Right, they're gonna have a weird, right. Uh, but like watching your kid use them for the first time, you're like, oh god, there goes a finger. Right, goes, you're like, don't do it. But yeah. I have this, I have to always remember. Like I remember looking at I, I, and I did this with Zoe and with B is like looking at them and being like, I mean, humanity's made it this far. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like kind of try and be like, I guess, you know, you might fall and break something. I don't, you know, okay. Right. You're pretty bendy, you know? Right. Well, they, and on purpose, they're supposed like, that's to be. Right. Like, like, that's the thing is I'm like, you know right. what? They're if like they were that pliable. fragile, I wouldn't be standing here at this park watching these kids eat shit in the sand. So, right. Literally shit literally in the sand. Literally shit in the sand. Uh, uh, wait, but- so listen to this. My friend Jason, my new friend Jason um, uh, Gowen, who is part of the Parent Lounge show that okay, I yeah, did yeah. a couple weeks back. And and actually, I'll be a regular on that show every oh, other nice. week starting in a couple weeks. Um and he, sh- he had, they had it posted the other day, but he showed it to me. He has twins, right. like, and they're like maybe two, I think. Okay. And he was in the bathroom, and all of a sudden, he his ring was going off because they managed together to push a chair over to right. the door, bust the lock open on the front door, like together, right. and open up the door, and they just took off running outside and you just and you it's all caught on the ring of like one right. and then and the, the other, other and yeah. then like five seconds later he's just runs after oh them God. he's like what are you guys doing right. and they think it's hilarious and he said he was like they basically like jurassic parked that shit right. and like and figured out how to like take the lock apart yeah. and get out the door and when you think about that with these kids too it's like those kids just put to their own devices figured that out right. these kids were actually given a task well they were given a task and right. so the first episode of uh, old enough anxiety takes us into it just we immediately go right into it a toddler is instructed by his mother to go on a 20 minute walk to the grocery store crossing a major road 20 minutes to pick up three items flowers sweet curry and fish cakes mm-hmm. okay and his mother gives him a big yellow flag to wave around when he's crossing the street and she, you know she says what do you do when you see a car and he raises a little flag okay he's followed very closely by camera people who captures every move so don't, you know, it's not like they're shooting this by like a drone and like this, right, the right. toddler's no, there's just out there. there. Like there are people there. And the safeguards. toddler doesn't know <clears throat> that that's who they are. Right. They the toddler are has no idea. Like, you'll see the look, camera yeah. people like they have it in like a fishing tackle box or right. a cart or a purse right. or whatever. Um, but the, the kid's walking down the street. Okay. And he gets to the store. He grabs the flowers and the street curry and then he gets in line to pay. Cashier helps him figure out the money and he leaves. However... He like, it was the cutest little thing. He's walking out the store and he goes, oh. Right. He realized he forgot the fish cakes. He turns around, dragging his little flowers behind him and goes, grabs the fish cakes, pays and head, heads home. Yeah. This little kid's still on a diaper, by the way. Okay? Yeah. And I was blown away, first of all, because I was like, I don't know, uh... If my kids could go and complete that task, my kids, my kids wouldn't have come back. Harper would have come back. Lulu would have found another family. Somebody, no, <laughs> There's no I, way. Th- they would have come back. But do you think all three of those things? And do you think if they started to leave and then remember they forgot something, would have been like, oh shit, I should turn around and go. Jody, home. I asked Lulu to go into my room the other day, and I said, please grab my glasses and a blanket off of my bed. And she goes, okay. Came back out with nothing. I go, where are the two things I asked you for? And she goes, oh. Right. What did you ask me for? Mm-hmm. Like, what did you do in my room? You walked well, down the hall, right. stood in my room, and then we're like, hmm, came back. I'm not going to lie. I do that quite often. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'm actually not sure why I'm here right now. No. Um, so, I, I, I'm just, I'm blown away by it. And then I also, like, it's such an interesting 
because I like I know people here are freaking out and I know people in Japan are like, why? Why? Yeah. And I remember even see like and that was one of the things when we remember when we were shooting in Japan and we were there. You would see small kids, maybe not necessarily as much in Tokyo, but you'd still like walking to school and stuff. You'd see kids where you were like, where are your parents? <laughs> right. Who are you with? You have to be with someone like and they're no, they're just charging down the fucking street on their right. way to school. Little backpack, got their thing, like doing their thing. And, and but here's the thing. Other people look out for them. Yeah, that's it is. And and for me watching this show actually weirdly, um, weirdly made me sad because I realized what a terrifying world our kids grow up in now where there are places in the world where like a toddler could walk to the grocery store yeah. and and you know that everyone is going to look out for them yeah. instead of like be so busy and driving so fast in their car and texting on their phone and getting where they're going and, and, being, or some, judgmental. and being judgmental or somebody mm -hmm. like hurting your kid or leave, like Taking all of these your things kid. like that it, it to me it was such a cultural shift of like that's just it's such a different way of uh of seeing your community you know, that you you go out and you trust your community ra rather than going out and being afraid of everyone that's around you. It's interesting because, uh, you know, I, I think there's pockets of communities within America that also are like that, though. That's true. I mean, you know, that's, yeah. Culturally speaking. I mean, I always that I used to when I'd walk by my, you know, Orthodox neighbors and right. like the three year old would be out there holding the six month old baby. Right. You know, like doing whatever, like walking in, like they, you know, and that's always how my older sister raised her kids. Like they all took care of each other. Right. And they were out and doing whatever, you right. know, and and young. But it, I think it is such a huge difference in cultures for sure. The Did you watch? OK, the second episode. <laughs> is that the juice? Is that, wait, is that the juice? That's the juice. Yeah. Yeah, juice that <laughs> I loved. Okay, that mom. First of all, when she is dragging him through the like the orchard or whatever, and she's just like dragging him by the arm. <laughs> right. I'm like, I love this mom. I sh I relate. She's done. She is. She's probably a Japanese f bomb kind of mom. Right. Like right. you know, she's just like this fucking kid. Oh my right. god, I'm she's dragging you through an orchard. Um, and so is it like you know she's like okay, go make the juice, but. How cute was it that they all got emotional when he went off on his own? Like they were so like it was such a big moment. And I was like, oh, oh, I love this. Anyway, but the kid, oh Lord, the kid. Also, can we talk about the walls? I was like, this little child has drawn all over <laughs> all of these walls. That was the first no, I was like, I'm oh. telling you, there are certain things that gave me so much anxiety, and that right. was one of that them. That was one, yeah, that was definitely like, one of them. I was like, and, and I wondered if that was like like a, it, like it in one go did he do <laughs> such a big fucking mural on the wall that mom just went, yeah, I guess we just draw go, the walls now. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Right. Like that, I would have liked to have seen that moment because I have a feeling it was like she dragged him by the arm, whatever. There was a whole moment, and then she just went, I guess this is what we do now. Yeah. So screw it. But he was bullshitting her on the phone, like, oh yeah, I made the juice, yeah. and she's like, I can see you, you know, and he was like. <laughs> And I have seen my, I was like, I know this kid. I, my kid would get along really, my kids would get along real well with this oh, kid. Oh, my kid definitely would have been chasing the neighborhood dog for like 20 minutes. <laughs> right, yeah. Which is sure. what. sure. Oh, yeah. You know, the, that's, she go the, live with the, whoever gotten, owned the dog. Like, they would have gotten back and been like, wait, we were supposed to make juice. Yeah, what? Yeah. Like, but we have a dog. You right. know, like, right. yeah. <laughs> I don't have juice, but I do have a dog. Did you watch the episode uh, where the little girl, she forgets something? I can't remember what it is that she forgets, but then she gets back and she's like beside herself that she forgot. And so she's like bawling and the mom's trying to cheer up and she's like, let me get you some ice cream. And she's like, no, I can get the ice cream. Like, oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, that's also that really was like, killing me. Oh. Like, yeah, I, in my in my current emotional state, I will tell you, I went from like laughing hysterically to feeling wild anxiety to then bawling. I, <laughs> I was like, see, I just was like, oh, this is cool, because sometimes I I look, I know I I baby the kids. I know I do it, particularly with B. Yeah, and I, yeah. I have to stop doing it. And I've tried to get better. And honestly, Mescal has helped me with that a lot because he's like, they're capable. They are. They are. And. and you know, in an NPR article titled, A Four-Year-Old Can Run Errands Alone and Not Just on Reality TV, 
uh, writer, writer uh, is it Micheline? 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 Micheline. Oh, I like it. Micheline Duclef brings up the benefits that come from giving your small children responsibilities like running errands. So around the world, the norm is actually giving children complex tasks under the age of five. And I remember reading about that in, it was some, um, like Finnish or, uh, Swedish or, you know, some, one of the, the, um, Norwegian countries, um, I remember, can't remember which one was, but they take them out in the woods and they're like chopping wood with axes yeah. and they're doing, learning like how to build fires and doing things. Uh-huh. Maybe Sweden. I think. And like learning how to do shit out in the woods. Right. And, um, you know, uh, uh, anthropologist Margaret Mead wrote in her article um, that learning to run errands tactfully is one of the first lessons of childhood. And, you know, this is often the case around the world. Kids in primary school go shopping at the bakery and the supermarket by, the, by themselves, themselves yeah. and proud of their independence. And I think that was something that people used to do, like our parents' generation. I mean, I don't necessarily know that my parents did it, but like a little more so they'd be like, hey, go to the store and get me, if I'm, you know, go get me a pack of cigarettes. But like, <laughs> go, you know what I mean? Like that was, parents would send you like to go get stuff. I know at least like Mescal's age, like that was, their parents were like, yeah, go to the store and oh get Oh my God, this. again, my mom used to kick us out at like, I don't know, probably nine, ten o'clock in the morning. Like, be like and go, be like, go, go yeah. play with your friends. Here's, you know, you got yeah. this much money. Do what you're going to do. And, and you, I'll, I'll yell for you or call right. someone's house and figure out when you're coming back. Yeah, exactly. Like, we don't do that really anymore. Right. I, I did start sending my kids to the store pretty early on once we moved out here. I mean, Harper was like eight and I'd have her. And as long as she was with Lulu and like holding her hand, right. I was, you know, fine that they had a uh, a street to cross wasn't terrible. I also baby Lulu a little too much. I've tried to not do that, but a lot recently because Harper's like, okay, by her age, I was doing all these things. And I'm like, shit, you're right. right. So I've been like trying to be better about right. that, you know? Right. Um, but I will say, I mean, I know I've I probably made this joke on the show before that like for the longest time we would just say like Harper's middle name should be go get your sister because it was like she was constantly taking care of Lulu. So be yeah. Harper, go get your sister, you yeah. know, and and I do think it's good to give them autonomy. Like, look, yeah. Harper was I, able to make a whole fucking breakfast yesterday. Right. And by the way, you know, she made me dinner every single night the week before. That's really sweet. I mean, Good job, Harper. Like, and like looked up recipes and like did it, you, uh, you know? know? I'm, my kids are going, uh, one's going to camp. Well, one's going on a trip to San Francisco. B's going on a trip to San Francisco for Girl Scouts. Nice. Just with her troop. And she's going to Girl Scout camp later in July. Zoe is going on a 10 day trip with her class to so the East fun. Coast. So like they're going out and doing these things and I'm so excited to like watch them launch a little bit you yep. know what I mean and like yep. go do these independent things away I think they will come back so different and so much it, it'll just I think it'll really be a, a big shift for them no I agree um, I also I think the uh the other thing I think I've, kids you know kids need to go out and figure out how to do things on their own and they do are dying for that autonomy anyway I'm not saying like go send them you know like out wherever but I right. do think that like this show really reminded me like oh Kids are far more capable than I than I think they are, and I need to give them that ability to find themselves a little bit. I also find that if you set the bar really low of what you'll do as a parent because you make them do a lot of stuff, then when you're like, oh, let me make your lunch for you today, they're like, really, mommy? <laughs> <laughs> They're like pleasantly surprised. They're right. like, but like seriously, like recently, because I've always I've had them make their lunches pretty much their right. whole lives, or even if it's like leftovers, yeah. I kind of watch, but I let them do it. But so when I'm like, I've made you a sandwich, they're like, Oh, you're the best mommy in the world. <laughs> like, and I'm, Ooh, like, I'm gonna have to see yeah, mine are so always like, that. it's fine, I'll eat at school. Like, I'm like, can I please do you want to let no, I'm good. I'm like, oh, okay. Are you eating? Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> They are fine. <sighs> I know. But I actually, I really loved watching this show. I, I did too. I, like, I'm going to keep watching it. It's now. Me too. I'm like, oh, yeah, here, this is it. This is the, like, I'm going to put this show on and I, B's going to love it. I'm a little afraid to, yeah, I should actually put it on for Lulu just to be like, look it, there's a five-year-old that can do that. You can go into my room and get something, right, you know. Yeah, you can definitely. I'm, I, all I know is I'm just going to start making little flags. But actually, you know what? It was funny when she, when the little boy put the flag up, B already does that. When she crosses the street or when she's walking through a parking lot, she puts her hand up because she's so short 
that she worries that people aren't going to see her when they're backing up or when they're driving across the street. So she puts her hand above her head to wave and to make sure. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, like, okay, you can cross the street. And I was like, oh my God, she's in sixth grade, you asshole. Of course she can cross the fucking street. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, good Lord, th- you need to really adjust your expectations. Like, I freak out if she's using the stove or, and you know, whatever. It's- well, I mean, again, if if they don't know how and I, you know. Right, right, right. You, but at this age, they're in middle, yes, middle school. Yes, yes. Well, Lulu isn't yet, but she will be. And she can make tea. She's she's mastered that as far right. as like the stove goes. But yeah, I think I'll have her watch it. I, I want to warn everybody you will have some anxiety watching it. Oh, for like, sure. It's you really... will be like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, and and not just because you're watching the kids. You're also, you also, I had anxiety where I'm like, my kids don't do that. Like, you know what I mean? Well, like I had a little self-judgment where I was like. That's the thing. Like, the, the, I, I, you know, look, we can't say how much assistance the, the kids receive on the show, but the mere fact that they go into the world and return safely seems to sort of, run completely opposite to not only how we raise American children, right. but also, you know, the question is, is American society designed to hold children back? Like, do yes. we, do we uh, infantilize children too much? Do we give, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I know the pendulum, you know, look, we're far way away from like, you know, children in sweatshops and, you know, knitting things on giant machines. But... Have we gone so far in the other direction that now there's sort of this like suspended childhood that goes on and parents worry that kids aren't capable of doing anything on their own? You know what I mean? Well, right. I mean, I think that's the whole, you know, helicopter parent versus tiger mom, all that, right. you know, crap. I again, I think as you know, it's weird because it's we are we are safer now letting kids out than we actually ever have been right. before. And yet we don't do it as often right i mean we, we we are and the thing is is you know we will when you take safety out of the equation like you know when did we sort of decide that like kids aren't able to do like i remember you know you used to see it all the time in like 50s shows 60s 70s whatever like oh the kids going out and doing this or they have a job or they have a whatever like uh, yeah i had a and, job at 14 i mean you know 14 five well shut up uh, <laughs> fuck you were you slinging yogurt at five? No, you had to be nope, adorable. But I was working on a set and blah, having to work blah. through being sick and do- no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not kidding, but that, I'm being an asshole about it. Uh, no, but, no, it's true. Like, I, my mom also like had us travel, I think, and that right. I really give her a lot of credit for that. I mean, she took us to, you know, we, we moved back. We were in Israel like a lot when right. I was a kid. And I think, you know, her kind of throwing us into that culture too because yeah. Israeli same thing it's like there I remember even as a kid well, being and it's like just a, and, and there's again, kids everywhere no parents and you know? right and again I, it does depend on where you live here in LA it's just not that's just not where we live I grew up in Orange County and I had that a little bit I did I did have more of a sort of free play like a middle school experience elementary school experience yeah small town. you know I, I think when we realize like we have you know first and second graders doing active shooter drills, but it's, but we're afraid to let them, you know, take care of some errands on their own. I think it's w- what we're trying to teach them and what our idea of safety is maybe a little bit confused. It's, it is, I think a little confused and, and it's just hard also because we uh, have such a high murder rate in our country, which is another difference uh, in across countries <laughs> like it's well, a cultural it's higher, right 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 it That's is true. a cultural thing here more than uh, other right, places is, right. um and so i think that's probably uh an issue you know i mean and i know that, i watch too much and fucking that CSI. is a whole other episode that is that is a <laughs> whole other fucking a whole episode. Other episode but let's let's end uh, our episode um on a good note and uh Make or a toddler a run an song. errand. No, let's. Um, <laughs> and by toddler, she means me. Yes, exactly. Uh, I need a coffee. So let's do our grateful AF okay. cards that we love. Um, I wonder what we're going to get today. What are you going to be grateful as fuck for? Jesus Christ, right now I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. Nice. Grateful as fuck for David Bowie. I think we can all agree. Woo! We both have David Bowie shoes. Yeah. I went to the David Bowie exhibit. Love, I love, got a love framed Bowie. poster. Uh, in my so, house. fun game. Name someone cooler than David motherfucking Bowie. Nope. You can't. 
David Bowie is the coolest person ever to put on a unitard. And he really fucking is. He so modeled true. radical self-acceptance before we even had a word for it. He believed in the power of creativity and he obviously didn't give a single fuck what others thought of him. So let's thank the universe for David Bowie. Woohoo! Yay. I, that is 100% absolutely true. I consider myself very lucky to have been born and able to live in the time of David Bowie and Prince like two yeah. incredible musical geniuses yeah. uh, who I have such great admiration for. Okay, no, what are you agreed. grateful for? <laughs> Weed. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me pick that. Right. That'd be like a mate. Oh, I've had that one before. I can even see it from underneath. That's what she said. Oh, God. <laughs> Doodads, gizmos, and gadgets. I've got gadgets and gizmos aplenty. Yay. Uh, the fact that there's a class of things that fall under the category of doodad, gizmo, or gadget makes life a little more fun, doesn't it? Yeah. Also, it, uh, if something can be described as such a ridiculously silly sounding word, it's usually something pretty fucking cool. Look around. Is it a doodad? Could it be a gizmo? A gadget? In some rare special instances, it just might be a whatchamacallit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I call everything, all of these. Galore. Yeah, I. You want thingamabobs? I got 20. 20. But uh, who cares? Not here's bad. the thing. I don't remember actual words, though. No so now deal. these things are like the words that I use for everything. Do I you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my dad, yeah. his these are all gizmos and doodads are like my my father's favorite words. Like, no joke. Aww. And I can't remember when I can't. But I. These are anything. This could everything's a doodad, gizmo, gadget, whatchamacallit. Well, because absolutely. I don't remember fucking anything anymore. That's oh, well, the it's problem. a thing of a thingamabob, a whatchamacallit. Right. right. I do have 20 because everything's a goddamn thingamabob because <laughs> I don't know what the names of them are anymore. Oh, well, I'm grateful for your doodads. Um what well, sounded dirty. <laughs> oh, dear God. I'm glad somebody Please let us get out of this episode. Dads. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, thank you for joining us today. Make sure you go and check out the Netflix show. Uh, 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 what is it? Oh, my God. Wow. Old enough. There we go. It's a I, It's, you know, whatchamacallit. Uh, apparently, apparently I am old enough because I can't even remember the name of the show I've been talking about. That's it. It's done. We should go home now. I'm sorry. Yeah, me fucking too. All right. Well, you guys, uh, if you want to find us uh, at Never Thought I'd Say This on Instagram, across all socials, you can find me at Jody Sweeten. I can find me at Jody Sweeten uh, if I remember can that. You? Sure. <laughs> you can find me at the Celia Behar. You can find the podcast on uh, wherever all platform, you get your podcast but you can also watch this episode a week later on youtube yes so you're on our youtube it channel it on one week and then the following week you can watch then us. you can watch us do it as well Jesus. if you really want to torment yourself all right uh you guys thank you so much for joining us uh I, i'm so glad we talked about this today and i'm so glad that i made you laugh uh anyway <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> remember you guys keep killing the parenting game and not your kids <laughs>